welcome to part one of the fifth episode of Growing Stronger's LP Doc Talk. Today we're speaking with Gary Arnold, president of Little People of America, who has graciously donated his time to share his, his expertise on topics of school and bullying in relation to little people. Gary will be answering questions that were submitted online by the LP community. If you would like to submit your own questions, you can do so by going online to growingstronger.org and clicking on the LP Doc Talk tab. You will also have the opportunity, opportunity to ask questions today at the end of this session. We hope you find this information useful and relevant, and we thank you so much for listening and supporting Growing Stronger. Gary Arnold serves as the Public Affairs Manager for Access Living, where he has worked since 1999. He also serves as the President of the Board for Little People of America, a national membership organization that offers support and resources for people with dwarfism. He represents LPA as a steering committee member for the National Disability Leadership Alliance, a coalition of 13 disability-led membership organizations. He sits on the board for Public Narrative, serves as a board member for the Crossroads Fund, and is a 2013 graduate of Leadership Greater Chicago. In 2012, the American Association of People with Disabilities presented Gary with the Justice for All Disability Rights Award. Gary is a contributor to Streetwise and the Huffington Post. Married in 2009, Gary lives in the South Loop of Chicago with his wife, Katie. Thank you, Gary, so much for being with us today. Um, if you're ready, you may go ahead and begin with the first question. Okay. Um, thank you Mary, very much, uh, Stacy, and uh, I want to uh, thank Growing Stronger also for inviting me to, to be a part of this session. It's, uh, it's really an honor to be here, especially I'm looking at the website right now, and uh, it's referring to me as an expert <laughs> uh, all of my life. I've never really referred, uh, uh, thought of myself as an expert in, in many areas. Um, but I guess when it comes to the experience of, of, of dwarfism, uh, at least for me as an individual, um, I, I probably am an expert in that area. And so I'm, I'm really happy for the opportunity to, um, share a little bit about my experiences and what I've learned, and I hope that it is uh, helpful mm -hmm. to, to uh, people who are, are, are listening or, or hear this recording. Uh, as Stacey said, uh, questions were submitted, so I'm just going to um, read through uh, this list of questions and, and answer them as I go to the, the best of, of, of my ability. So uh, I also want to thank everyone for, for taking the time to submit their questions, and I hope I can um, provide a, a little bit of insight. Uh, so question number one is, uh, how would you explain dwarfism to a class of elementary school students versus middle school and high school students? Um, so I think, I think that's a, a, a good thing to think about. I, I think because obviously as you go across the spectrum of those grades from elementary to high school, uh, obviously age is you know, becoming a factor and students are getting older and as students get older I think uh, you, you do uh, change your answer um, for if we're talking specifically about elementary school students or, or, or younger students um, I would just kind of you know try to keep it basic and uh, with an explanation that is is simple to, to understand um, I think when 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 young kids see somebody with dwarfism, what they see is uh, a physical difference, and they see uh, uh, someone who's shorter. And uh, so, to, to as a kind of a, a launching pad, I would kind of just start with that. Uh, you know, dwarfism means that I'm going to be uh, uh, shorter than 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 than, than most uh, uh, of of the other uh, uh, kids. Um, and then as, as you get older, um, I think it's okay to, to go into more detail about, uh, about specifically dwarfism and, and disability and maybe uh, explain uh, a, a little bit uh, more specifically about, about how dwarfism works, about, about maybe uh, the specific pieces of the body, parts of the body that, that dwarfism uh, might uh, affect. Um, and I think it's also, you know, as, 
as the age group gets older um, to, to kind of go, it, it, it may be important to, to go a, a little bit more into, you know, the history of the, the dwarfism community and, 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 and maybe even touch on the fact that the, there are organizations out there uh, for, for people uh, with, with dwarfism uh, in order to, to provide kind of the older kids uh, with a little bit more uh, uh, context um, for uh, uh, what the dwarfism community, what's it all about to, to, to be a member of, of that dwarfism community. Um, but, but most important also what I want to stress kind of across all age groups, whether it's elementary, middle school, or, or high school students, um, you know, people are, are asking questions because they're curious. Or, or, um, and, and so I, I think it's really important to, you know, after you know, you give whatever explanation you think might be best for that particular age group to really like turn it back on 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 the group or on the individual and and make sure their their their, their questions are are answered because uh, oftentimes it's that kind of curiosity and 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 kind of um, uh, dis discomfort perhaps maybe that's cr created by by not knowing by being confused about a person that might lead to things like you know teasing or or bullying um, so the best you know the one of the best ways to to address that and kind of uh, address that head-on and maybe even prevent be preventative from, from from bullying and stuff happening down the road is to you know clear the air and make sure uh, uh, all, all questions are answers uh, answered so that the the other kids are are comfortable around um, uh, somebody with dwarfism. Um, I can remember vividly I gave this presentation to a group of, of middle school students. Um, it was a bunch of years ago now. I don't remember exactly how many. Um, and uh, uh, I was giving this presentation, uh, this general presentation on disability and and dwarfism, and I was talking about all this uh, historical stuff and and kind of generic, generically I was speaking about it, and um, and then at some point the teacher she didn't stop me, but she kind of gave me some guidance, like she's like you know that you know, why don't you talk about yourself a little bit more in your experience, and as soon as I did that and it was, uh, that that really kind of opened it up. Uh, 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 for kids and got them engaged and got them asking a uh, 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 question because they really are curious about people as as an individual and as, as about their individual experience if there's somebody who uh, uh, appears to be uh, uh, different. Uh, so that's question number one. Uh, going down the list now, uh, question number two. Uh, if my child is being bullied should I confront the other parents first or go directly to the school? Um, so this one I did some research on uh, ahead of time. I was really glad I got, uh, I, I had the questions ahead of time in order to pre prepare. Um, and, and, and it really looks as if um, uh, 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 the answer there is, you know, to, to, to go to the school uh, because, you know, I mean, it, it might be good to address it with other parents. Um, uh, but but the but but the school is the environment where you know both uh, all the parties involved uh, uh, you know that's kind of a common environment where everyone's going to be and everyone has to be uh, uh, you know five five days a week when they're going to school so whether you like it or not um, uh, you, you know your child with dwarfism is going to be around those uh, those other students and those other kids if if they're the ones. Uh, you know who who are doing the bullying, and but and you don't necessarily though have to be around them at at, at each other's respective homes, um, and also uh, uh, it, it, I think school is, is the place to do it because schools have have an obligation uh, to uh, address issues of of bullying. Um, uh, it, it's often said that you know uh, uh, many many people experience bullying. Um, uh, in fact, I think that the national statistics are like over 25% of the population uh, when they're young experiences bullying at, at one point or, or, or another. And if you're someone with a disability or, or someone with dwarfism, those, those percentages go up uh, uh, dramatically. And although it's something that's very common and a lot of people have to deal with, it doesn't mean it's okay and it doesn't mean that, that, that schools don't have a, an obligation uh, to, to, to deal with it. Um, so, so actually, 
you know, uh, students with disabilities have the right to get, uh, uh, have access to an equal and, and fair uh, education. And bullying uh, oftentimes is seen as a form of harassment, which is a, a barrier in the, uh, that stands between a student with a disability and, and, and an equal uh, education. And so under the law, specifically uh, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act and uh, what's referred to as Section 504, which I think is of the, the Rehabilitation Act from the 1970s, um, uh, schools are, are, are expected to, to, to protect that environment um, for, 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 for students. And so with that being said, many st you know, schools are going to have systems in place uh, in order to, to uh, 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 address uh, these issues. So, so I would recommend you know, going to the schools first and kind of making a plan uh, and talking it through with the schools to make sure that they do have a plan uh, and, and are equipped uh, to, to deal with it. Um, another recommendation that I found when, when looking at, the, at the, the, this issue um, is to, to, to make sure you document it. Uh, if you do reach out to the schools on the issue of bullying, if you think your son or daughter uh, uh, is experiencing bullying and, and you want to need to do something about it, um, uh, make sure you document it and, and, and put it in the form of, of a letter they're recommending. Um, I think I'm sure it's fine to, to make a phone call and, 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 and send an email or something, but, but, but they're recommending that you also back it up uh, with a letter and, and that way you can use that um, as, as kind of a, a paper trail to, to, to document the experience and, and build a record for yourself. Um, and also I'd recommend, you know, for further information, there's a, 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 a lot of, of toolkits that are out there uh, that kind of talk through, uh, uh, you know, give, give steps to take for parents and others to, to deal with it and how to approach schools. Um, uh, uh, on, on things. Uh, the Department of Education's Office of Civil Rights has some, some resources uh, available online, uh, and there's this uh, other group called the, the Pacer Institute, I think it's called. Uh, they're based in, in, in Minneapolis, but they have services for, for people ar around the country. Um, they have some, some good resources also on how to, to, to deal with and, and, and address issues of bullying in, in the schools. Um, all right, moving on, next question, question number three. Uh, how would you handle exclusion, which maybe isn't intended to be bullying, but hurtful uh, uh, nonetheless? Um, yeah, I, I agree. Uh, uh, exclusion can can be hurtful, uh, especially as, as you know, a, a, a child gets older and they're becoming more kind of aware of their dwarfism and uh, perhaps of, the, of their physical difference and, and realizing that like, like, hey, I'm different from most of the other students in my class and in my school, um, it's easy then to kind of attribute, you know, if they if feel like they're being left out, it's easy to kind of blame that on um, um, on the fact that that you know I, I'm, I'm different from from the other kids, and then so you start to you know get uncomfortable and and be kind of self-conscious about that 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 difference. Um, so it's a tough one to deal with, and 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 you know, it, and, and and I don't think there's any easy answers for this one uh, because you know you you can't force. Um, uh, other kids to to be inclusive if, if if it's kind of an informal environment that 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 we're we're, we're talking about. Um, I think what what is important is though to kind of talk it through um, with with your your son or or, or daughter, you know, because uh, uh, oftentimes that's kind of a key thing is just being able to to talk about it and. Not everyone's comfortable talking to their their parents, um, but 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 you know it, it can still be helpful um, uh, you know for that child to, to be able to to talk through things through because kind of kind of voicing concerns and voicing hurt feelings are kind of one step uh, uh, toward 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 dealing with it. Um, but I think talking it through and finding out from your child like how can you help them, you know, do you want, uh, uh, to, do they want you to, to go to the school to, to talk about it? Do they want 
um, you to reach out to the people who are excluding him or her and, and, and try to, to try to do something about it. Chances are they're not going to want that. You know, they feel like that would just lead to, to, to more exclusion. But, but, I, but again, I think that a, a key would be to, like, get your child to, 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 to start talking. Um, and unfortunately, sadly, I have to, to say, you know, Little People of America, the group that I'm a, 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 the, the president of, uh, you know, it's, a, it's this group for people with dwarfism. And every, every uh, uh, summer, uh, we have a huge national conference with up to 2,000, if not more, uh, people attending. Uh, and it's a great event because you know it's it's the one time of year where where people with dwarfism can spend up to a week uh, in an environment where 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 it's other people with dwarfism and their family members and and, and friends and um, so so it's just time of year obviously even though we all have dwarfism we're not exactly the same we have different interests different likes and dislikes you know but 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 this is a one time of year where we're all kind of on a loving level playing field in terms of not being judged or not being uh isolated or stigmatized as, as a result of dwarfism um but it happens even there you know bullying is going to happen there and exclusion happens there we had an issue with it uh, a couple of years ago where where you know and and it happens every year i'm sure uh, uh where you've got people coming to the conference for the first time and they feel left out you know because people are in their cliques or in their friendship groups and things like that and they're trying to get involved um but they're you know, not able to get involved because they're being excluded, whether it be purposely or or not not purposely, and 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 that's a hard issue. And one thing we're trying to to do in order to address that, though, is to kind of develop these new new peer groups, uh, uh, these groups of people who are specifically uh, have volunteered to be ambassadors for for first timers, uh, uh, you know, so that, you know, first timers, you know, have this resource to, to go to, to, to people to hang out with, people to do things with, um, if they are feeling e excluded at the conference. And so I think that's another important thing, you know, those resources might not always be available, but, but a key thing is to, is to, for your son or daughter to, 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 to find out where their interests are, what their likes are, and, and, and really seek those out. And because, because oftentimes, you know, uh, 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 if, if you seek out those areas, then, then that, that's those similarities, you know, in terms of, of, of what you like and what your student, what your child likes and what other students like, you know, if they like the same thing, um, that's going to draw them together. And, 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 and hopefully that will kind of create this great, uh, 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 community of, of, of support uh, for, for, for your child. Um, so it's a really difficult one. There's no simple uh, uh, answer in, in, in the case, in the question dealing with exclusion, but, but I think really kind of trying to talk it through or, 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 or finding an ally for your son or daughter who can talk it through with them, finding out what they like, finding out what kind of direction you know, they want you to take on, on the issue. I think that's important, you know, just as long as they start talking about it. I think that's going to be a, a way to feeling better and a, and, and a way to, to, to dealing with it. Uh, okay. Uh, next question on the list. This one's a, a, a long one. Uh, how do you handle it when your child is planning on competitive sports activities in high school? And then in parentheses, it says varsity football, baseball, basketball, and competitive cheer, dance team, etc. cetera. Uh, but you know they won't be physically able to compete on that level, yet they haven't realized that yet. Uh, do you just let it go, or do you give them the reality check and tell them there's a big chance they won't make the team? Um, probably every parent is going to give you a different answer on this one and i have to you know uh, full disclosure here i am not a parent uh so i'm speaking on on my own experience uh as someone who's gone through this stuff not as as uh as a parent uh, of somebody with with, with with dwarfism um my advice though is is you know you, you gotta let kids do what they want to do within the realm of safety at least and things you know as long as it's not dangerous and stuff um 
I mean, I feel fortunate at the experience I know. Uh, it's the only one I know, but I, I, I feel kind of fortunate for the way um, I was raised in, in terms of activities because um, uh, my parents let me, me go, you know, do what I wanted and let me learn for myself. Um, I, I think, you know, in high school, I went out for the varsity baseball team. Uh, but at that point in my life, I, I kind of knew I wasn't going to, going to, going to make it. Um, uh, so, 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 uh, so it's a little different than this question saying where, where you might not realize yet, um, uh, what your capacity is and, and, and that you aren't going to be able to, 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 to keep up, uh, 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 with the other kids. Um, but I really think it's important for them to kind of go through that, that themselves and, and not necessarily be mandated or told, you know, um, uh, that, that, uh, that they, they can't do it. And, and who knows? I mean, I know I, I live in Chicago and there's a family, uh, that lives in suburban, uh, Chicago and they're a family, I think of, of, of five. And I think at least four of them, if not all five of them are, are, are little people. There's three kids. So maybe one of the kid is not, not a little person, but, um, but one of the boys who's a little person, you know, he made the varsity football team. And, and I, I know he's not the only example. There's people around the country, uh, who are, are, are little people and who are competing in high school sports, uh, uh, at a high level. And so I think it's important. Um, my older brother, you know, I've got two brothers, they're both average stature and my older brother is two years older than me. And he played varsity basketball at a fairly, you know, it was a fairly big high school. So it wasn't, you know, you had to be good and, and he was good. And, uh, I remember being a freshman in high school. I wanted to be like him. Um, and, uh, uh, so I, I told the basketball coach I wanted to go out and, you know, I gave him credit, you know, for, uh, telling me I couldn't telling me that I, not telling me that I couldn't and not telling me I didn't have a chance. Um, he just kind of looked at me stoically. I was like, like okay, whatever you want. Um, I was saved from, from, you know, that experience because the gymnastics coach approached me and, um, said I should go out for gymnastics and, so I'd never been recruited in my life before for anything. So I said, sure, you know, somebody actually wanted me to uh, play sports. Uh, I'll do that. Um, so I never did it, but, uh, but I appreciated the basketball coach for, for, you know, kind of letting me, you know, uh, make the decision for, for, for myself and, and, uh, appreciated my parents for, for letting me do that. I did play flag football one year and I remember after a tough practice, um, I got belted a couple of times <laughs> in the face. Uh, and like, I, I told myself one night, like, I don't want any more of that. And I was like terrified to tell my parents about it. I thought they were going to be like, you have to stick this out. You can't quit. Um, but they were like, you know, whatever you feel is best for you. Uh, so, so I think, you know, again, just talking to, listening to, you know, being realistic, um, uh, with, with your children, but, 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 but letting them kind of learn for themselves, uh, uh, within the realm of, of, of safety, uh, you know, and, 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 and as long as it's realistic. Um, but I think in the long run, um, you know, it, that's probably the best, best, uh, 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 approach to, to take. Um, Okay, next question. Uh, do you have any great comeback lines that young kids can use when offensive things are being said to them? Well, I have to say I am 45 years old right now, and I am still looking for that elusive uh, great comeback line. <laughs> uh, somehow that only happens in the movies, I think. Um, uh, and, and I think you know, one reason it's hard to, to, to come up with a, a standard comeback line is that every single situation is, is, is going to be different. Um, and, and, and also I think like in the case, especially if it's young kids, I don't know if, if comeback lines are the best approach to take, um, uh, uh, uh you know, uh, um, uh, I, I think maybe kind of a, a, a not that comeback lines don't necessarily aren't positive, but I think it's it's you know I think I, I, I think if offensive things are being said, the younger you get, the more likely uh, the chances are that 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 offensive behavior is coming up from this place of of of, of confusion and 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 curiosity uh, and. 
so I think, you know, this is not easy. Again, easier said than done. But but I think the best thing to do is to kind of maybe, you know, role play with your kids and to, to, to kind of come up with these approaches that uh, aren't really necessarily comeback lines, but are are ways to engage uh, the other party and and to to really get that other party, you know, if if you know, are, is it really a question you have? You know, instead of saying this offensive thing, you know, do you do you want to ask me a question? Because I'm happy to like answer it for you. Um, so 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 maybe you know, at a younger age, you know, a, a comeback line uh, would be like, "Can I help you?" or or, or any questions, uh, something like that. And as you get older, I think you know things. Become become more complex and and it, it might not necessarily be coming from this place only of of confusion and curiosity and misunderstanding unfortunately it might be coming from this place of of kind of you know intentful uh, and, and antagonism um, and so as an adult you know what I kind of have a goal when I kind of approach situations or I'm forced to, to deal with situations like that. Um, you know, if, if they make me uncomfortable, I kind of want to try to make them uncomfortable. And the way I have found the best way to do that is to, is to not say anything, you know, acknowledge them. Think, you know, make it clear that that like you know that they're there, uh, but not like give them any credit, you know, by 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 responding to it. Um, you know, oftentimes if you just stare back, um, you know, it'll upset them. They'll be like, "What? What? What?" You know, and and the longer it goes, the more frustrated they'll get. Um, it's kind of nice sometimes, you know, because, you know, if they've said something offensive, then, then it's good to get them frustrated uh, as well. Um, but I think, you know, but 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 with younger on, on the younger scale of things, I, I think to turn it around as, as a question and try to use it as this kind of learning opportunity. And uh, and that's what I hear from a lot of my peers also, because, you know, they deal with situations sometimes where they're at a store or something uh, and and a young kid is with their family uh, and the young kid has a question and, and then the parent tries to, to scurry them away, you know, because uh, they're embarrassed by it, you know, but that doesn't help in the future if they come across another little person. So the best way to deal with that is to try to, you know, say, hey, stop, you know, do you got questions? And and what, let me answer them, you know, because that way going forward, then hopefully, uh, you know, they, they won't have an embarrassing situation like that again uh, when they run into another little person. Uh, okay, um, moving on to the next question. Uh, how do you handle it when your child comes home upset because his friends are leaving him behind on the playground because he can't keep up and he's feeling left out? <clears throat> I know his friends are probably not doing it intentionally, but what do you suggest that isn't just her mom or dad uh, uh, fighting his battles for him? Um, so reading this question, I was reminded of something that happened when I was young. Um, uh, when I was growing up, there were a lot of kids in the neighborhood, so I was lucky, and we did a lot of things together. Um, we all had bikes, um, but we never really went for long bike rides. Uh, but one day, we, we, were, we went on, out on this long uh, excursion on our bicycles because we were, um, we were trying to raise money, I guess, for something. I don't know what it was, but, but we were in search of aluminum cans. We wanted to find out as, uh, as many, find as many aluminum cans and, and recycle them and get, get paid for them uh, uh, in order to, 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 to raise some money. It was probably like seven or eight of us. Um, and we found out that 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 you know we were, thought that that this location where we wanted to go was going to have a lot of like litter and aluminum cans. So it was like I don't know five miles away on our on our dirt bikes. Um, so we took off uh, uh, in search of that place, and I got left behind. It had never happened to me before. It was really strange. I didn't, you know, know what to make of it or anything. And uh, my older brother was lit with me, so I, you know, kind of felt bad for him and a little embarrassed for him that he had to deal with it. Uh, but I was also um, uh, glad uh, for for him being being with me. Um, uh, and so we never caught up with them. We couldn't even find the place. You know, they were so far ahead of us, and we didn't know the directions. We were just following them. We couldn't find the place, so we went back home and then when everyone 
Miles got home, um, we were hanging out on my, my stoop and, uh, my dad had found out what happened and he, he was pretty upset. Um, so he came out and yelled at the other kids for a minute. Um, not too bad, but like, just let him know that it was not cool, uh, 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 uh what, what they had done. And it was kind of embarrassing what he did, but I was also kind of happy about it because, um, I don't think, you know, I think this question says that, you know, they're not doing it intentionally. I don't think my friends and the neighborhood kids were were doing it intentionally. You know, they could just bike faster than me and they were biking fast and they didn't realize it or they didn't think much of it when I was uh, 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 behind them. And I don't, I don't know. I, I'm not in their heads. I never really, you know, I was too embarrassed at the time. I didn't talk about what, 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 what effect it had when my dad talked to him. But I think if it's not intentional, uh, and then they find out like what's happening. I think, you know, they're going to make an effort to change that. They're going to feel bad about it and they're going to, you know, re- maybe remember that in, in, uh, in, in the future. Um, so although it's not easy, you know, I would, I would ask your child, you know, what have you talked to them? Have you let them know how you feel? And, and that's a big step to be able to confront something like that. Um, but, but, you know, with your support, you know, they might be able to do that. And, and maybe if they feel like they can't do it, then, you know, they might ask you to, to help. And then you can maybe reach out to, to those other kids directly or reach out to their, uh, uh, parents and, 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 and see if they, they, they can address it. So again, though, with so many of these questions, I think, you know, communication is the key and, and letting your child, whether it be your son or daughter, kind of guide the direction, you know, they, they, they want to take it, you know, but, but really find out, try to get them talking about how they feel, how it makes them feel and what they want, what kind of role they want you to play in terms of dealing with it, whether it be just kind of morally supporting them or, 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 or taking action for them. But in this case, I would encourage them to see if they could, you know, address it with their friends, um, and see what you can do to support that. But then, you know, you know, but also be there if, they, if they're not comfortable with that and say, well, what, what can I do to help? Um, all right, moving on. Should I give my child's teacher information on dwarfism and have them explain it to the class or should I go into my child's class and explain it? Um, well, number one, I, I, I would do neither unless your child's comfortable with it. And some kids, are comfortable. I mean, here I hear these stories about you know uh, parents coming into the classroom and talking about it, or or the kid themselves, you know, doing this presentation for for the class. But never, you know, whether it be the teacher or you as a parent or somebody from the outside uh, doing it. Never do it without them, you know, n- knowing about it. And and also, I think I think they have to be comfortable with it. Um, you can certainly, if they don't appear to be comfortable, that you can certainly kind of uh, talk about it with them and try to get them to, to, to see, you know, how this could help in the long run. So I certainly think it will help in, in the long run, um, but, but, but it could also be very difficult if, if the, 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 the child's not, not ready. I did this presentation uh, at the school in suburban Chicago at the beginning of the school year in August uh, uh, this year. Um, and it was uh, this presentation for, for faculty and administration at this middle school uh, where this little person was gonna, gonna begin. Um, and, you know, the, the teachers and, and the parents decided that, you know, they weren't ready for a presentation to the class uh, 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 about dwarfism, um, but they wanted, you know, the, the staff to, 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 to know about it. And so, and I, I think that was a good approach. You know, I think, you know, whether or not your child's ready, you know, for someone to go into that classroom and talk to the other kids about it, um, uh, I think it's important for the teacher to get information and perhaps, you know, others at, at the school. Uh, I know when I was in sixth grade starting middle school, um, my parents uh, gave gave my sixth grade teacher uh, a, a book about dwarfism, uh, but no one ever came to my class and talked about it. Um, uh, but again, I, I, again, communication. My parents never told me they gave uh, this book to the to the teacher, and then she gave it back to me at the end of the year. And I was like, "What? Why are my parents talking to you about dwarfism?" And 
obviously in hindsight I can understand now uh, why uh, but but I wish I had known about it uh, at, at, at the time um, okay what extracurricular activities do you recommend uh, I get my child uh, with achondroplasia into um, well whether it's someone with achondroplasia or or another type of dwarfism um, uh, again I think I think it's I think you gotta just let, let them go let them find out what their interests are um, and and let them try at that maybe they won't succeed but but it's really important at a young age you know to, to, to pursue what, what what you're interested in I mean there's some stuff you know out there you hear, hear these things like well you know the back is an issue or the legs are an issue and so I shouldn't do um, activities that you know are going to put pressure on the spine or the neck or things like that and I mean that's true but but that's also true for everyone. Um, uh, you know, um, uh, 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 everyone's gonna. You know, the neck and the back are, are, are vulnerable uh, uh, to, 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 to to everyone. And and maybe there's a higher risk for, for, for kids with dwarfism. But um, but I think it's it's better to err and and to be lenient on the side of of of, of, of letting somebody go and, and and participate as much as they can in whatever they want to. Um, I had a consultation um, with a doctor on on LPA's medical advisory board, and I asked her specifically once. Well, you know, we get all these this messaging about um, uh, uh, you know not doing these activities that are going to going to put pressure on the on on the neck and the back. Uh, but yet, you know, these days, you know, you, you hear more and more about these little people who are are running marathons things like doing, doing this like ultra you know running activity that you know if anything that's going to put a lot of pressure on the back and, uh, this, and I asked this uh, member of the medical advisory board like how how do you reconcile that you know like you know because me as president I want to obviously support them uh, uh, for, for, for what they're doing because it's great because they're raising awareness uh, in some cases they're raising money for LPA so that's awesome um, but yet you know what is this a dangerous message uh, uh, to, to, to the LP community, to, to the little person, the dwarfism community? And the doctor said, well, you know, if, if a choice between, you know, going out there and running or doing nothing uh, and not being active, you know, I say go for it. Run as much as you want. And and so 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 I, I kind of, you know, want to modify that approach and, 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 and give that as advice. It's like, you know, let them go. Let them find find what they like. Uh, because you know, if someone finds what they like, that's where they're going to find other people who are their your peers and friends and things like that. And that's where they're going to find, um, you know, be comfortable and be independent and be happy. Um, so, so yeah, you know, equip them with information if there are dangers to be aware of, but also to the extent that you can, let them let them decide what kind of extracurricular activities they're interested in. All right, um, I'm on the second page, so we've got four questions left, it looks like, right now. Um, what advice do you have for an incoming college freshman with achondroplasia who will be living in the dorms on campus? Um, <clears throat> that's a good question. It's an interesting question. Um, when I went to college, I took a stool uh, with me, and that was it. Um, Yet, I, there's a couple of things I regret that I wish I had done. Uh, for four years, I, I uh, you know, was on the meal plan, and I went to this cafeteria where half the stuff at the salad bar I couldn't reach, including, you know, the, the plates and, and the bowls uh, for, that, were, that were stacked, like, up over the, 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 the salad bar. And it would have been simple, very, very simple for me at any time uh, during those four years to make a, 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 an easy accommodation request uh, of, of the college cafeteria services, whatever they were called, to, 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 to put something lower, you know, to put some of those dishes lower. And that's just one example, uh, but I imagine there there might have been 
than than uh, other things. But uh, but I think it's it's you know there's nothing wrong with approaching you know going to college with the same way you you would approach you know someone entering high school, entering middle school, or or entering uh, a grade school. You know, um, uh, 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 do a tour of the campus um, with somebody. Who, who works at the college, you know, and, and check it out with your son or daughter and, and say, hey, you know, this might be an issue. Yeah, as you're going around the campus, this might be an issue. <clears throat> and look for, for, for things that, that might be helpful in terms of uh, uh, accommodations of, of physical access. Um, uh, also, you know, approaching it um, uh, uh, the same way as you would the other levels of school in terms of kind of just human interaction and sharing information uh, 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 about dwarfism and things like that with uh, uh, some of the, the leaders on, on the campus who, who maybe should know about that. Um, the, the plus, I think, with, with, with once you enter the, the college level, uh, um, uh, is that it's at that point in time where where inclusion and diversity is starting to to to, to really be in, in, embraced, and so if if kind of dwarfism is kind of uh, presented uh, from the perspective of inclusion and adding this diversity uh, uh, to to this campus, uh, um, I think that. That would really be engaging, and 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 other students as well as the the, the faculty would would embrace that. You know, I don't want to, I don't think any incoming college freshman would want to be put on the on the spot. Um, uh, but but maybe even proposing, like if they're up for it, like, hey, you know, can I can I write something for the campus newspaper uh, 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 about my experience and and about what it means to to to, to be with some someone with dwarfism. So, um, so I went to a, a tiny college, so it was much easier said uh, uh, and done on, on a tiny campus, like any right for the college in the state, right? like on, on bigger campuses. Uh, uh, that, that might not be the case, but um, but I, you know, approach it with the same template that that you may have, you know, in, when when going to high school or middle school or or elementary school, with you know a few modifications will probably be needed, but. Um, but I think that that's a good good place to, to start. Um, and the second question is very, the next question is very similar. Uh, it says, besides putting stools in the classroom and bathroom, what other accommodations do you recommend for schools? Um, so many of you might be aware uh, of this, but, but a, a lot of what's being done nowadays, I think, for students who have uh, IEPs, individual education plans, uh, or who have 504 plans. Um, not really sure what the difference are. I should know uh, that, but, uh, but, but, but I think uh, kind of an inventory uh, or a tour is taken of that school before the school year begins, where the student as well as you know the administrators, parents, and other kind of stakeholders do a tour of that school, um, uh, uh, and 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 so can identify areas where uh, accommodations um, might be needed. Um, that's another area where I, I kind of regret, you know, where I wish I had said something. You know, my whole life I, I sat at dust where my feet couldn't hit the ground. Uh, I really think I would have, you know, done better at school if I was more comfortable in in my desk. So whether it be a lower desk or or kind of a stool, you know, not just for reaching something, but a, a stool to make sitting at a desk uh, more, more more comfortable. Um, I think that that that's something that would be uh, 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 appropriate. Um, but yeah, I would just, I would recommend, you know, every every uh, everyone's going to be different. You know, individuals with achondroplasia and, and, and individuals uh, with dwarfism across the spectrum. You know, not all of them are going to need the same thing. So, uh, because everyone's different, I think it's important to to to, to have conversations with the schools, do a, a, a hands-on tour of, of the school in order to uh, identify things that are needed. Um, next question. Uh, this one's for address to Gary and Becky. Becky's tomorrow night, so. Uh, I encourage everyone to, to join tomorrow's conversation also. Um, but this one's asking specifically to hear <clears throat> about your experience growing up 
and what experiences left you with positive and negative uh, impressions. Um, I maybe could talk for a long time about that. Um, middle school, I think for some reason, uh, was the most formative time for me in terms of the experiences I remember uh, specifically as they had to do with me being somebody with, with dwarfism. Um, I vividly remember, um, and this is on the positive side of things in the, in, in the end, uh, the day before I started sixth grade, so the day before I was going to go enter this whole new school with all these kids I'd never met before who knew nothing about me. I was terrified. Uh, but I had, you know, my brother, he was two years older than me. And so he was in eighth grade, we we're in the same school. Uh, and then we had all these other neighborhood kids who, uh, were, were, were going to be at the school with me, um, who knew me. And, uh, I remember we're last day, last night before school, Sunday night, we're out in the street talking and this one kid says, uh, oh, Gary, it's going to be rough for you. You know, I think, you know, suggesting that people might make fun of me, pick on me and stuff like that. I was like, oh my God, this is horrible. What? And it never was the case. You know, I might've been oblivious of it. I shouldn't say it never was the case, but by on a whole, you know, systemically it was not the case. And I don't know if it was because I had my brother there, uh, uh, or, or groundwork had been done ahead of time or enough that there, people there knew me to kind of create this kind of welcoming environment for me. I don't know what it was, because I certainly don't think the sixth, seventh, and eighth graders that we were <clears throat> any more enlightened uh, than anyone else was, uh, but it was okay, you know, and I think that was because a, a large part of it, you know, I, I had the support group, um, whether I was aware of it or not. Um, so that was kind of this positive thing. And uh, interestingly, like, you know, I. I can remember three negative experiences in middle school, and I'm only going to, uh, I'll touch on two of them really quickly. Um, but two of the three, you know, came not from the students, but, but from the, the teachers, which was really kind of interesting. Uh, uh, the first one was like um, this one group of teachers or, or, I don't know, maybe it was the students, but the, but this teacher was kind of doing marketing for them. But, but as, you know, this group of people wanted to do a talent show. The, the middle school had never done a talent show before, at least not when I was around or knowing it, you know, and they're trying to organize a talent show for that year. And so this one teacher was coming around from for, to classroom to classroom, kind of you know, talking it up, trying to get people excited about it, trying to, <coughs> trying to um, uh, 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 get, get people to, to come up with things that they could do. And so as part of that, you know, she starts listening. Like, These are a few of the things that other kids are going to do. And she starts listing these things. And one of the things she's listed is like, you know, these kids are going to dress up and run around up on stage as, as dwarves. And I was like, what? <laughs> it's like, and I didn't say anything. You know, I was in seventh grade at the time. Uh, I, I didn't say anything, but I was like, what? <laughs> I just kept thinking about it. And I was like terrified, like, oh, my God. Like, what if this talent show happens? Um, luckily, the talent show, there was not enough interest. Uh, the talent show never happened, so I never found out like who those students were that had that idea. Uh, but unfortunately, also I never, you know, uh, confronted that teacher or you know that whole group of people that should have really been confronted about that. Like, why is that a talent, and why do you think that's entertainment? Um, but that's something that's always stuck with me. Um, the second thing that stuck with me is, like, you know, unfortunately I never did anything about this one either. Is uh, um, uh, in middle school, we took this retreat once. Uh, we, we took this trip where we went to central Wisconsin and we stayed at these cabins for a couple of days and did these kind of leadership bonding uh, activities as, as a class. Um, on, on the second night that we were there, uh, the, the, the teachers, a uh, couple of the teachers, they did this skit. And in the skit, the, the, their characters were... were for little people, um, the, you know, they, the way they created their characters when you're sitting out there in the audience looking at them, you know, they look like dwarves. And, and that was the whole joke, you know, that was, that was the point of the whole thing was to, you know, to make it be funny. And it's funny because, the, you know, these people up there are dwarves and they're, you know, like uh, running, running around doing things at, at, at the camp uh, where we were, you know, but, you know, they're, they're little people. So it was kind of like, you know, Tim Conway doing his uh, golf thing where he made that video where 
he's pretending to be a dwarf playing golf the, 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 the whole time. It was the same concept there. And it was amazing because, like, everyone's, like, laughing uproariously at, 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 at what was happening and everything. And, and I couldn't figure it out. Like, what is going on here? Are they making fun of me? And I, I, I didn't know what to do. And I didn't really know if they were laughing, at, you know, because they were dwarves or because it was, you know, funny for some other reason. But then when this kid ended, you know, this kid behind me, this student, you know, friend of mine, you know, he, he said, that's discrimination. And, uh, and then I was like, what do you mean? I kept asking, what do you mean? What do you mean? And then I was pestering him because I didn't know. I wanted to hear from somebody else if they were thinking the same thing I was. Um, and then this other kid finally chimed in and said, Gary, they're making fun of midgets. And, uh, and, and I I didn't know what to do at that point. I never figured out what to do. I never talked to them. I should have confronted them about it. But uh, but that was a that was a tough experience on me. And that's one where you know I wish I had been able to communicate. I wish I had talked to my parents and or had gone to my brother or something like that. Um, uh, but I never did. <laughs> um, uh, but I'm able to talk talk about the story now and, and write about it sometimes. So that's good. Um, okay. Um, so my final question here is my four-year-old came home from preschool and said one of his classmates made fun of him by calling him small and a baby. I know he is in for many more years of this since children can be quite torturous towards one another, but what can I tell him to say as a response to the other kids? And also how do I explain that he has dwarfism? Um, so for the first part of the question, um, how, you know, what can I tell him to say as a response to other kids? Like, that's a young age. That's a really super young age. So I, I really believe that, that that kind of, you know, bullying behavior there is, is really coming from this place of just being really not, you know, the other kid not knowing and, and having questions of, like, oh, like why is it, why is this other student look different than I do? And, uh, and, and I think that's where the name calling of being small and a baby is because, you're confused about it and uh, um, so I think that the best approach there is like to, to try to again talk it through with your child and, 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 and come up with strategies so they can, 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 can say well you know do you have any questions you know is there anything I can help you with like yes I am small uh, um, and, and if you have any questions feel free to feel free to ask me because uh, I really do think like the information is a really powerful tool uh, um, when when one is young, when we're young, and, and the more information we have, um, the better we are, and the more accepting we can be of of of, of different people. Um, and then, how do I explain to him that that he has dwarfism? Uh, that's that's a tough one because when you're young at that age, you know, I don't know what age is the turning point, but you don't. It's hard to understand that that you really do look different, and 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 that everyone who sees you knows you have dwarfism. Um, these friends of mine, once I remember, you know, uh, yeah, my friend has a, a, a boy, and uh, and as he he's a young adult now, but I remember you know stories that she would say. Uh, 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 like he would ask his mother, like, you know, how did they know I had dwarfism? I didn't tell them. You didn't tell them, did you? And, you know, and, and he didn't comprehend at that point by just by looking at you. You know, they know that, that, that you have, 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 have dwarfism. And, and that can be a difficult thing, you know, to, to when, when that finally sets in at this young age when, you know, you can be very vulnerable to, to realize, like, how different you are compared to, 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 to uh, uh, other uh, other people, um, but there's going to po be a point when when your son or daughter starts to recognize that, and 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 I think you know just kind of uh, being open, communicating, and again recognizing, you know, uh, these experiences that your son or daughter might be having, and being there to support them and to to to, to talk it through as they go. Um, and also, you know, um, I don't think I mentioned this, you know, th throughout the, you know, the, these questions, but I, I think something that can be very helpful, something that always helped me is, and uh, is just knowing that, uh, you know, you're, you're not alone. 
Um, you know, obviously, as individuals, our experiences are our own, and 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 our experiences may be unique to to, to ourselves. Um, but but you know, a lot of people deal with isolation. A lot of people deal with being treated differently. A lot of people deal with being uh, left behind uh, in, in 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 certain circumstances. And I think it's very important to to know that 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 th those stories are are out there. So I think you know, looking for you know when, when your child is young, for or or older, or even younger, kind of looking for what what kind of literature is out there, what kind of kid stories are out there that kind of teach these lessons or share these lessons of you know being treated differently. And it doesn't necessarily have to be specifically about dwarfism, um, but. But, but 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 these stories, stories, and that that can kind of create these figures for your kids to to identify with. I think that's very that, that's very important. At least it was for for, for 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 me to know that that someone else has gone through something similar. And um, you know who knows? You know the outcome might be different for for your child compared to to another person. But but just knowing those other resources, knowing those other people are out there. Uh, it is important, um, and then just you know, again, kind of being communicative, communicative uh, with your child, and taking the lead from them. Um, you know, making sure that that, that you're there to a uh, answer their questions about difference and dwarfism, and then kind of take the lead for, from them about like, well, you know, do you want to, you know, uh, 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 in, in terms of sharing information and talking about. Uh, 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 who, their dwarfism and things like that. Um, so, so that was a tough one. You know, there's a number of tough questions here. You know, uh, uh, because because they're difficult and and there's no real easy answer and everyone's uh, experience is going to be different. Um, but that takes me through my list. Uh, so I really uh, appreciate this opportunity. And I mean, there might be some more questions now. So I'll I'll turn it back over to Stacy to see if uh, anyone's come in with questions. Thank you, Gary, so much. Um, thank you for sharing your expertise, your insight, your experiences. It was, um, it was very interesting, and I think a lot of people are really going to benefit from your answers. So thank you. Thank you very much. Um, do any callers on the line have any questions for Gary at this time? Okay. Sounds like we're good. Um, we don't have any others that have come in um, typed. So again, Gary, thank you so much for for donating your time and sharing your experiences with us. I really appreciate it. Uh, you're welcome. Yeah, thanks for the invitation, and uh, it, it, it was my pleasure. Thank you very much.